I want to talk about uh, diagramming and documentation. Diagramming and documentation. When you're building out your website, your web apps, your applications, it's very important that you don't leave out that crucial step of A, of diagramming out your site. So that could be just a bunch of uh, boxes that describe the views, something like this. These boxes could be also used to describe and break down your object structure. If you're writing object-oriented code, it could be used to set up the structure between your database tables. If you're using an SQL-based database, it's very useful to have uh, diagrams written out. I prefer pen and paper. It's just easier for me that way. And when you write things down, You'll know if you've been doing any of my courses that by writing stuff, you activate the tactile sensation. And so you're giving your brain multiple inputs, which tells your brain that this is more important and this should be worked on and considered. You always want to do that. You have to understand your brain is like the supercomputer. Well, it is a supercomputer, but it's a supercomputer that has to be code or it has to be instructed, if you will, it has to be, you have to let it know what it is it should be focusing on. And there's certain things that it does. One of the things that it pays attention to is how much of a stimulus, how much input it has uh, coming into it. So if you just look at something, it's one level of input. But if you're looking and writing, that's two, uh, two sensations that are coming in or two uh, sensory inputs, if you will, tactile and visual. And that, I don't know what percentage is, but it increases the perceived importance of that information. It's a great way to learn, by the way. That's why I talk about it. In my course, I say, when you're uh, doing the material, take little notes. Not so that you can review the notes, although you could review the notes, but you take notes, just the act of taking the notes and writing things down are going to commit things to memory much more quickly than they would otherwise. So that's number one. Number two, documentation. So I just had a meeting with uh, my lead developer who is now working on the uh, Studio Web 4 store, which is going to replace the Killer Video store because it integrates with the Studio Web SaaS, uh, which is our, my learning platform. And... Uh, there's a lot of functionality in there. There's a lot of functionality in there. And in the rush to get things out, we're pushing now to, we're at the, the home stretch in terms of releasing to the public. It has a whole bunch of new capabilities and a whole bunch of new things that we'll be bringing to, uh, to the world. A lot of times what gets lost in the mix is updating your uh, specification, your documentation for the application. It's gotten to the point where the app is pretty complex, and so uh, because the documentation hasn't been maintained as it should, we find ourselves, uh, well, at least me anyway, I find myself forgetting, okay, did we implement that, and why did we implement, in, implement that? What was the thinking behind that? So, for example, you will find if you get into more complex application development, you could find that a very simple decision, well, a seemingly simple decision, could have uh, a chain reaction, if you will, uh, uh, that is quite complex. So you may decide that uh, the way the system calculates uh, whatever, a price or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, could have a huge implication in terms of how you track the data, uh, where, what that data is going to do long term, how this impacts in terms of the performance of the system. That's another situation that happens. Yeah, so keeping your documentation up to date is a very, very important thing. It should be just, it should be considered just as important as the actual code that you write yourself because by having very clean, clear documentation that's up to date, it will allow you to, uh, to fill in and uh, find any faults in your architecture much more quickly than you would otherwise. Finally, if it isn't obvious, having very good documentation of your feature set, the reasoning behind your decisions in terms of uh, your architecture, why you decide to go this route instead of that route in terms of uh, in the way the system processes certain information, uh, besides this, this allowing you to prevent certain problems from occurring, so, because everything is thought out and put down on paper. Also, well, it doesn't have to be on paper, but you get the idea. Another huge advantage is just onboarding new talent. When you have to bring in a new developer, 
uh, to, to uh, work on a particular module or to replace uh, somebody, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's a thousand times easier for them to get up and running when they have clear, well-written documentation that describes everything and the thinking behind everything that's done in the application. So there you go. All right. A bit of a hodgepodge video, I guess, today. I'm heading out. It's a super nice day. You got to enjoy the summer while you can when it's cold. Let me tell you when it's cold. You got to enjoy the summer while you can when it's hot because it gets really, really, really cold in Montreal, as you guys probably know. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.